It wasn't that it was always easy. It was a submission to what I knew it was meant to be, though. And it was a setting aside, largely because I didn't even know it existed, the idea of all these different rules of what you should need to do in order to get your message out there. And so bit by bit, this thing built and grow, and then this whole industry came along of all these rules and all this stuff you have to do apparently to make money online, and next minute, there's a whole social media thing, and you've got people posting left, right, and centre going, if you don't do this, you'll never hit seven figures. And I'm like, really? Because I've been doing that for years, and I never did that. And there was so much of that that I started to actively teach on the flow and ease approach to making money online, because I was like, when did somebody come along and decide not to do the flow and ease thing? Why are we trying to fight to get back to the thing that it should always be? You know, and I'm just talking from my business journey. Kelly, hi. I'm talking from my business journey, but I'm also thinking about our relationship with God. You know, it was never meant to be like a fight to get back to flow and ease. Like we're trying to like wrestle our way back into surrender or to into surrender in the first place. It's like, that's what it was always meant to be. But here's the thing. So many of us driven folk, I know who I'm talking to here, my purpose-driven ladies, amen, if we've been the high achiever, because I was a high achiever since, like, childbirth, I would say, my own, like, the time when I was born, not just childbirth, but where I gave birth. It was just like a thing. It was a standard in my family. I was talking about this a lot in the secret garden earlier. It was an expectation. It was, you got 98%, what went wrong, what happened to the other two? That was actually from a, a lens of love and just a genuine thread through my family of, be the best, be your best. So it was meant to be encouraging. It was encouraging, I guess. But anyway, the perfectionism vein, spirit of perfectionism, let's say it as it is, certainly has run strong in my family, generationally. Has also been addressed through deliverance ministry. Thank you, Lord. But that idea that I could be the best or that I should be the best, it was there since I was a little kid. And also on top of that, entrepreneurial skills, communication skills, natural leader, huge natural introvert as well, like many leaders, but put me on the stage where I'm meant to be and I forgot that I'm an introvert because I stepped into a thing. So I was operating from flow and ease and also though I would set myself standards and heights in business that were like actually quite reasonable if it was a true surrender that could have been there that wasn't there at the time in Christ but instead it was about me trying to hold myself to a standard and making it that if I don't meet these certain standards and I don't do a certain thing and I'm not a certain type of person or I don't continue to maintain a certain type of identity or persona then I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy and so so it was just like a push yeah so when I said I'm going to be convicted now by God and actually have God at the centre of my life rather than part of my life, but I'm still doing so much of my own life my own way. And that intellectual statement that I made saying, I'm going to be convicted now and put God first. Well, God took that and he ran with that. He's still running. Um, he's taken it fully. I came to realise, I didn't quite realise it at first when I said that, but I came to realise that I was going to need to unlearn so much of the things which for my whole life, for decades... So for four plus decades, 44 years, I had depended on myself in a lot of ways. Even as a young child, there'd been things that occurred in the family to where I learned to depend on myself. And it was often through a really good lens and it was also just stuff that occurred in the family. But either way, unraveling 44 years or however many years that you might have, of self-sufficiency and then on top of it the fact that a lot of the online space gears around being you know the driven woman the high achiever the independent boss babe i never cared for that term personally but essentially that sort of archetype it's a lot to unravel and then there's also fear isn't there well hang on hang on on top of it let's say you're a single mom and you've actually learned over a period of how many years that it kind of is on you and that's how you operated because you didn't understand how to actually live in the grace of god don't know how I missed that growing up in a Christian family, but I somehow didn't quite get it. Like a lot of people, we experience and encounter God fully when we do, right? Regardless of upbringing. So let's say you had all that and it really has felt like it's on you and that, you know, your, your, your babies literally would not be okay if you weren't living your life in that way. And then all of a sudden you're realizing there's a different way and I'm, I'm going to hand it over. And it's like, okay, well, here, here I am handing it over. I don't think I should hand it over. Like, if I hand it over, it's going to fall in a supernatural black hole and disappear. 
well, hang on. Well, who's going to take care of me? Like, yeah, conceptually, like, I get the theology. But, uh, like, right now, it's like that, all right? That's the handing over. And so then, bit by bit, you know, God does his thing and he works on us. And we have that, when we have that genuine heart and desire, like, Lord, show me, help me, understand, you can see me holding on. Like, my heart is for you, Lord, but I, I like, do not know how to let go of this thing. I'm trying to cast it onto you, but I feel like it's surgically attached, surgically attached to me. So when our heart desire is genuinely for God, we just got to lay that down. Like, God, you got to help me. He already knows. You know, it's not a secret. So when you do that, he'll keep unraveling and working in you. And it's just a beautiful unfolding. And it's like a vomit, messy, supernatural, just blender of gloriousness at the same time. Who knows what I'm talking about?